Making It Personal with Bishop William Johnson on Iowa Catholic Radio and iowacatholicradio.com. Welcome to Making It Personal with Bishop Johnson. I'm Kelly Musher Collins with the Diocese of Des Moines. And today's show, we're visiting with Catholic author, speaker, and host of the Christophonic Show. Obviously, Chris Stefanik. He'll be speaking at this year's Christ Our Life Conference held September 24th through the 25th at Wells Fargo Arena in Des Moines. But before we get to today's interview, let's find out what's on the bishop's mind. Boy, he's going to be a showstopper at Christ Our Life. Mm -hmm. We're blessed to have Chris coming our way. But uh, here we are. Uh, Yesterday was Mary's birthday. I don't know if you celebrated Mary in any special (laughs) way, a piece of cake or something else. I was actually privileged to be with my prayer group again. It's a prayer group that got started almost 30 years ago, a priest prayer group. Oh, wow. And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, you can call it a support group or if you will, but uh, really just sharing life and ministry. And, you know, when you have the trust level, it builds up over time. And so, yeah, mm-hmm. these are mainly priests from Northeast Iowa. Uh, Bishop Zinkula and I have been long uh, founding members as well. And so we've kept that going. And that's been a great uh, mm-hmm. reservoir of, of strength and peace and uh, mm-hmm. everything just to have those, uh, that bond of, among us. You know, we think about the Seven Sisters Apostolate, women who dedicate themselves to praying for priests, uh, you know, and to dedicate a holy hour once a week at least to a particular priest in that group. And so, yeah, obviously the, the prayer connections as well. But uh, we always encourage priests, whether they're our native-born or international priests. And that takes a little time sometimes, you know, who mm-hmm. might one be comfortable with uh, over time, you know. And uh, mm-hmm. sometimes, you know, people discern that maybe it's time to go with a different group or not. But uh, the, the blessing for us, and we've been invigorated by some of the younger priests that we've invited, and we lost Father Harry Kelker uh, uh, last year. He had a long-time Parkinson-like uh, disease that he had. But uh, again, I, it's something we commend, and hopefully we all find that small group, those kind of people that uh, we can just share faith, whether it's in the context of Bible study or something else. You know, uh, This weekend I'll be uh, at the... Uh, Different things going on, but among them, a, a group that I've been with since I became bishop, the Biking for Babies organization, and uh, they're having their annual retreat. We're going to be hosting in Des Moines this uh, weekend at the Emmaus House, the newly mm-hmm. uh, dedicated uh, facility, mm-hmm. and so we're grateful for that. And then on Sunday, uh, Sister Joan Clara Nuroka, uh, who is a Nazareth sister of the Annunciation, works at Mercy One Hospital. She and her, her sister, she's celebrating her Silver Jubilee of religious life, and so. We'll have a mass at St. Pius X. Uh, it seems like I've been at Pius a lot lately <laughs> yes. in the Basilica. Uh, they're going to get tired of me, but uh, hopefully we don't warm out, wear out the welcome in any way. But uh, this is a good chance. And, and again, the strategizing and all that uh, is part of that. Um, and, uh, you know, I hear there's a football game coming up this weekend. I don't know, you know, the Iowa State game. Kinnick Stadium, right. yeah, I don't know, any any predictions? I know I was on uh, John Leonetti's show a couple of weeks ago. I, I, and, yes, uh, I heard that. I, all I have to do is just throw it out there, and <laughs> John bites the hook, yep. and he gets revved up just talking just about it. Although, we're take it. although I yeah. think he might be jinxing us, you know, us being, being a lifelong Iowa State right. fan. Sorry, Hawk fans, I, yeah. I, I can cheer for the Hawkeyes. But, right. uh, um, not but, playing but you know, he seems rather confident, and that's not the true... Uh, Nature of a, a hawk or of a cyclone <laughs> fan. Hawkeye wrong. fans are always confident. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> they expect to They're win. Always, but, uh, not yeah. sure what could. Yeah, be cyclones. Are, oh, I don't know. You know <laughs> and everything else. But looking forward to seeing this new strong safety and uh, some new faces to, to fill. And uh, Hunter Decker, obviously, the new uh, and improved version of who he is. So it's always a great event for the state. Uh, a lot of memories back in 1977. That first game, I was there at Kinnick and. Oh. Uh, you know, been uh, privileged to do that. This one I'll be probably watching on my uh, favorite uh, flat screen somewhere. I uh, mm-hmm. might be doing that. So don't tell them on the Biking for Babies retreat. <laughs> 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 I said yeah. I had a commitment <laughs> at a certain time. I have confirmation, confirmation in the morning, uh-huh. the Silver Jubilee. Not in a way. And then some vague <laughs> commitment <laughs> uh-huh. at 3 p.m. on yeah, Saturday. Super, yeah, Super Bowl Saturday. Su- Super Bowl Saturday. <laughs> yeah. 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 Never accept a wedding on that weekend. Right. Right. <laughs> No, uh, all all good. And uh, again, uh, we're moving into this month, uh, we're looking forward to Chris and what he's going to bring to us, um, and to even have him spend some time with us as well. You know, he kind of he, we he kind of caught us off guard here with Jimmy in our studio, so we're going to kind of laugh a little bit as we get started. But uh, he travels around, so looking forward to seeing Chris. We're going to take a quick break and return. We'll visit with Catholic author, speaker, and host Chris Stefanik. Goes to making a personal with Bishop Johnson. 
Monsignor Frank Bignano here. It's time to save the dates for the 2022 Christ Our Life Catholic Conference, Saturday and Sunday, September 24 and 25 at Wells Fargo Arena in Des Moines. If you can't join us in person, live stream it. Once again, the conference offers a world-class lineup of speakers, the Holy Mass, incredible music, reconciliation, and adoration. Go to ChristOurLifeIowa.com for tickets and information. The 2022 Christ Our Life Catholic Conference, ChristOurLifeIowa.com. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio provided by Knights of Columbus Borman and Pfeiffer Agencies, serving the Catholic families in Iowa. The Knights of Columbus is a fraternal benefit society providing financial security to members and their families, specializing in life insurance, long-term care insurance, disability income insurance, and retirement annuities. And you can reach Knights of Columbus Field Agent Rob Ryan at 563-689-6801. That's 563-689-6801. Thank you, and God bless. Welcome back to Making It Personal with Bishop Johnson. We have with us today Catholic author, speaker, and show host, Chris Stefanik. He'll be speaking at the Christ Our Life Conference held September 24th through the 25th at Wells Fargo Arena in Des Moines. So uh, beautiful to have you, Mr. Stefanik. I'll call you Chris if that's okay. And uh, Bishop Johnson that's here. That's great. Yeah. And uh, uh, honored to be with you guys. Yeah. Thank you so well, much for and, uh, and uh, what a coup for Christ Our Life to, to secure you to, to be one of the speakers and uh, presenters uh, for that weekend. Uh, your your uh, trajectory of evangelization and the use of media, very savvy in so many ways, really has kind of evolved as a as a vocation that I think uh, in, you know englobes your your vocation as a spouse and father of six and in so many beautiful ways. Uh, so again, we're blessed. Um, can you get, you know can you talk about how you know this kind of emerged as your sense that this is what God was wanting you to do, whether it was in college or afterwards, and you know how you know that discernment and who maybe you were some wisdom figures for you in that Mm, you know it really emerged from my conversion experience uh back in junior high my parents dragged me to a retreat i did not want to go on and i I love coerced religious experiences for kids for that reason (laughs) 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 and and i I love that the first christians called themselves the living ones and when i went into this retreat it it was the joy in the room that changed my life as as a young kid and I, I realized in the presence of these joyful Christians that I was dead inside. Uh, I also realized that the only thing I wanted to do with the rest of my life was to serve God in some way and to spread that joy that he had given me. Um, and this is in junior high? Yeah, I, in junior high? This is junior high. Yeah, I never wanted to do anything else. And I, I, I went to school at Steubenville. The team that gave the retreat was from there. I never applied for any other college. I, I, I had a very singular uh clear focus and call from junior high. I wasn't sure what form that would take, whether I'd be a priest, whether I'd be a parachute minister, whether I'd travel around and speak. Um, but that, that all emerged over time. You know, you take steps and you see where your gifts and the needs of the world intersect, and that's, that's your sweet spot. That's where God's calling. And uh, over the course of the years, it just um, I, went from, I went from parachute ministry to diocesan ministry uh, to just freeing myself up to and preach the gospel and, and get the word out through uh, media. And it's been a pure joy. It really has. So up until junior high, I mean, yeah, the sacraments, maybe kind of compunctory uh, participation in that. But uh, uh, you know, but then they just were kind of suddenly activated for you. And uh, would you say that there's a charismatic component to this? You know, we think of Steubenville and the Holy Spirit pulsating there. Uh, just yes. uh, how, how would you characterize that? Yeah, thanks for asking it that way. I, I think it was a very a charismatic, experiential uh, shift within me. You know, I, I um, to experience that God was alive, that He had a joy for me. Uh, and again, this was this was made clear by seeing it in the lives of Christians that I was with. And joy is that that sure sign, I think, especially to a disengaged person, of the presence of God. Um, so it shifted from going through the motions. And uh, making my priority in life sin, really, and thinking, you know, my fulfillment's going to happen by uh, messing around with girls and drinking. Like, I literally thought that that would be what makes for a good life at a a really young age. Sounds like the typical adolescent male, you know. I mean, (laughs) yeah, right? Right, exactly. Uh, And and to to have that fundamental shift in the the center of my my soul that. (laughs) It 
just light the fire and then the hunger all changes. I mean, my behavior didn't all change right away. It took years. <laughs> I'm, I'm still working on it. And uh, Amen, you know, brother. Amen. <laughs> it's, always, it's always a battle with sin. But that realization that the, the compass is now pointing true north, uh, that, uh, that my fulfillment, that my joy is only going to be found in him uh, forever. And, but, but beginning now, you know, um, that's, wow. That's a grace. That's a grace, right? I mean, you, you can you can bring your kid to a conference, uh, but you know, and I'm very conscious of this too, as a guy who goes around and preaches, and I get the joy of, of seeing God move in people's lives as He moves in mine. You know that that when I'm preaching, all I'm doing is setting the stage, and then if someone's life changes, it, it's because of the Holy Spirit and their openness in that moment. Definitely not interested in a cult of personality uh, or Christophonic, right? all about him no the lord jesus no i'm just a schlep and, I, and it's funny that uh <laughs> some some uh some people talk about a catholic famous well for me that means uh sitting in a lot of airplanes and in and in a super eight uh motel <laughs> all around the country and you know i, I, ho- I, I hope we'll do better than that in des moines but anyway all right <laughs> Thank you. everybody at a conference knows who i am but I walk down the street to the Seven Eleven, and like no one knows who I am. So you know, it, it, it's kind of it, cool, it, though, isn't it? I mean, to have that that stealth uh, dimension too to it, isn't it? I mean, you know. Yeah. It, oh, it really? Is. It keeps me balanced, and like I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a regular guy. Uh, but the, um, but you know, what is cool about the quote Catholic famous is that when someone does does actually recognize you, and Bishop, you experience this too. When someone recognizes you and knows who you are, it's usually the person you want to, to recognize you and you want to meet. That's just that's just the best. I love that. Mm-hmm. Well, at least for me, because uh, Bishop, maybe a lot of people will know you who don't like you, but <laughs> someone's been following me on my media. <laughs> they, they tend to keep a distance, but uh, yeah, the, usually the communications come in a white business envelope <laughs> that may or may not have. <laughs> so um, just to, don't want to dwell too much on your youth, but uh, did this kind of unsettle your family? Like, whoa, this guy's taking this a little too seriously now. Or, <laughs> you know, it wasn't like, oh, yeah, you know, tone it down here. You know, there's. There's Catholic yeah, right. moderation, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, part of part of why it stuck for me is that my family was excited about that. Uh, my um, my parents were were experiencing something similar at the same time. Okay. Just okay. My, my, you know, just falling in love with the Lord and uh, and experiencing exploring the joy of, um, of of what it is to really follow Him. It's really exciting, you know, to develop an interior life and a prayer life. Uh, it, it adds a dimension to life that brings it from the mundane and, and repetition to uh, a journey. You know, you're going somewhere, you're walking somewhere. Uh, so they, they, uh, I think it, they caught that joy too. Uh, yeah. And that, that really, that really made it stick. There was family prayer happening. Oh man. Powerful, powerful stuff. Um, yeah, it really was. So this is a Johnson S complex question here, but uh, stick with me, you know, the old philosopher, but uh, just drawing an analogy. So part of your presentation is the ones I experienced among college students. You enlist music, you know, you're a very accomplished musician, and now as an author as well. Do, you know, in the genesis of your talks, your presentations, does the song already, you know, in your soul give rise to the message, or does it flow from that? And likewise, do the books emerge from the talks, or do the talks generate the books? <laughs> that is a great question. Um, you know, the, uh, the the books generate the... Well, gosh, I think it kind of bounces back and forth. Okay. A book is a really lab- laborious, uh, long process, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, it's kind of like um, like giving birth, right? Uh, not, not that I really know what that's like, but I've seen it. <laughs> Uh, Gen- it Jennifer would be shaking her head you. right now, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, it grows within you. And there's very painful moments, and then, and then after uh, it, it, after the the book comes out, you're like, oh, here it is. I'm so proud of this thing, um, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so that that's kind of the experience. So there's it, it ends up being um, a, a, an unpolished talk that will sometimes then develop, and I'll and then I'll spend a year or more thinking about the topic. And perfecting it, and then pouring my soul into it, uh, and then it, then that becomes uh, the genesis of maybe a series of talks or a, a really polished talk. But it's for me, it's very it, it's it's super personal. I mean, my my book, Living Joy, and I'm going to talk about Living Joy at the conference, uh, which I can't wait for. Man, I'm so excited. Um, I'm, it, it it really it came from my struggle to live in the joy of the Lord during the pandemic 
Uh, so it's, I'm not, it doesn't come across as preachy when you read it because I'm, I'm kind of preaching to myself. Uh, so there's, there's the, the true secret the for every preacher. And the preaching to himself. Yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 It also keeps it from going to my head, right? I mean, some people, I think, have messages that they're giving because they have it all together. I think God is wanting me to repeat some of these things again and again and again because I need to hear them again and again and again. <laughs> <laughs> and likewise with the music then as well? Or is that, you know, is that maybe not as integral to what you're about? Or That's not that's not as integral, uh, really. Um, the, the books really are more of an integral uh, thing, yeah, for mm-hmm. sure. Mm-hmm. How many instruments do you play? Oh, I'm just, uh, you know, <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I play guitar and sing, but I, I, I don't do that at conferences as much anymore as I used to, especially, uh, um, I, I used to like, I used to have the seat conference and I started with the electric guitar, just jamming on wrists and it kind of, you know, if I'm going to use conference, I'll bust it out to just grab everybody's attention, which is a lot of fun. <laughs> Marvelous. Yeah. Marvelous. So, yeah. so this whole theme of joy, I mean, I think that's the attraction, the magnet, you know, when we don't have that, uh, what, you know, how are we going to evangelize in any way? So, you know, you think about Evangelii Gaudium, you know, but uh, you were mm-hmm. that before, uh, before Pope Francis, I won't say that. He had a pastoral ministry in Argentina and everything as well. But kind of a yeah. convergence and, and uh, uh, you know, you're kind of sympathetic with the Holy Father in this whole theme of the real joy, living joy. Yeah, and I actually love Evangelii Gaudium. There's some beautiful uh, parts of that. And, uh, and um you know, did, did especially about the focus on the kerygma, because and I and I think, and by the kerygma, I mean that's the core gospel message. I think there's an overlap of the theme of joy and and the core gospel, because the gospel message teaches you to see your entire life as a love story. Uh, and Pope Francis has said that we are in the midst of love story, and if we don't understand that, we've understood nothing of what the church is. Yeah, uh, so it, it's it's having that that worldview that gives you a cause for joy that shows you that life is something worth rejoicing in and all the ways that I, that I talk about and write about, about how to be joyful, they're all meaningless without the gospel uh, because there's no compelling reason to try to be joyful. You know, and you, you speak about a, a kind of atheistic relativism in a, in a way in which, you know, uh, you know, kind of the atheistic worldview is a, is a recipe for despair in us, you know, and uh, to, to believe in ourselves is. is an exercise in a futility ultimately. Yes, uh, the, so it's, that's my uh, term, not yours. So don't if you if you don't no, want, want those languages. Uh, you know. No, it's a great term. There's a, there's a famous atheist, George Wald. They said 400 years ago there was a collection of molecules named Shakespeare, which produced Hamlet. <laughs> and and think for a second about how empty that is, but also think about how accurate it is, how fitting it is, if atheism is correct, that we are nothing but a um, a, a emergent. A space sludge that came out of the cosmos and has achieved self-awareness and is destined to become worm food within a short period of time. And that's the end of the story. Uh, but have a nice day. You know, and we, <laughs> we, we, we wonder why, why people are, are, are becoming so anxiety ridden, depressed, self-loathing. I mean, generation Z is the least religious generation in history. Uh, they, they also uh, in 2016, their first year entering college, over half of them self-reported, that they felt below average in mental health. Now, obviously, mental health is not always a result of a faith problem, and sometimes it's a cross people can carry to become saint who they are, right, who they're called to be. But when you talk about numbers like over half, uh, we have more than neurological imbalances. We have a, a societal crisis, and, and people are seeking uh, counselors to help them with metaphysical problems. That their, their faith, they're grappling with the reality that they shouldn't be happy. <laughs> Uh, if if the if the secularized world they are being raised in is actually correct, that there is no reference to God, that there's no anchor in something above us, uh, and and that we're just wandering our way through life, which is all a big cosmic accident. Uh, and gee, why aren't these kids happy? And tragically, they're also being convinced that religion has worn out its purpose as they go through life miserable. And we have the answer. And we need to start being joyful and bold about proclaiming once again that we have the answer that they're all looking for. I mean, that uh, resonates very much. I mean, my confirmation homily, a theme that I hit, uh, you know, didn't directly adapt it from you, but I think it's a, very much a kindred spirit. You know, that the world's telling us, you know, if you really give yourself over to this mystery, this adventure of living Christ and pouring ourselves out for that, you know, 
that will be boring people and that this whole adventure will be just a kind of yawn, you know, in that way. And, yeah. and that's a great lie that's being perpetrated. I mean, that's that's where the dimensions of all this really open up in, in such a way. Mm. So, you know, uh, yeah, when 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 you forget the gospel, it's like it's like forgetting uh, the the purpose of marriage. What you're left with is a, is a lot of to dos, and it's it's boring, and it's worse than boring. It's burdensome, and and I I think that a lot of of people today, a lot of Catholics, but certainly the world, they've forgotten the point of all this. They don't think of Catholics as the Church of the Gospel. They think of us as the things that came from the Gospel. Just like when marriage loses its way, you start just thinking of the marital relationship as bills to pay, someone to report to, uh, kids to pour yourself into that exhaust you sometimes, uh, giving up your closet space. But wait, 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 hold on. What is that from? Oh, yeah, I fell in love with a person. <laughs> <laughs> well, now the rest makes sense. <laughs> Yeah, that, you know, that is kind of panacea for, you know, what the, our own felt the deficiencies in some way. Uh, yeah, it's so, yeah. yeah, the cross is going to be there. And, you know, we had a piece of St. Augustine a couple of weeks ago, that restlessness. If you're feeling that restlessness, that's part of the good news. It means you're in touch with something. You're in sync with the Holy Spirit mm. moving us to, to, to something that alone can fill us. And you can have the whole world as your oyster, and that's that's not going to be enough. We want more than that. Yes. That dynamic yes. Yes. Yes, and, and you know the sad thing when when people live in a, a distracted era, a secularized, distracted world, they feel that restlessness, and they immediately pick up their phone and scroll and try to drown it out. Mm-hmm. Whereas the, the Christian that that thinks there's a there's an answer to the fundamental questions about the meaning of life is then given the courage by faith to say, let's look, let's look at that restlessness in my heart because there's an answer to it. Amen. Hey, Chris, if we could take a little break here and uh, have you come back after the turn, okay? Yeah, you got it. We're going to take a quick break. You're listening to Make It a Personal with Bishop Johnson. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio is provided by the Sarah Vocations Ministry, including the St. Sarah Club of Des Moines and the Sarah Club of Council Bluffs. Sarah is an apostolate of the Worldwide Catholic Church dedicated to fostering and supporting priesthood and religious vocations. Sarah strive to accomplish their mission through prayer, fellowship, and service to the bishop, priests, sisters, and all in religious formation, and in doing so to increase their own holiness. Learn more at joinsarah.org, join S-E-R-R-A.org. Thank you, Sarah, for your support of Iowa Catholic Radio. St. Vincent de Paul helps so many people. You're right, Zoe. St. Vincent de Paul Executive Director Steve Havman here. We are serving over 32,000 local residents with food, clothing, furniture, and financial assistance annually. We invite you to learn more about all of our life-changing programs that positively impact so many Iowans by simply Googling St. Vincent de Paul of Des Moines. Our mission is to help those in need become self-sufficient through education, community connectedness, and unconditional support. Help us help others. Even kids! Welcome back to Making It Personal with Bishop Johnson, and we are back with Chris Stefanik. Thank you for uh, remaining with us, Chris. Uh, so, yeah. Oh, yeah. Christ, Christ Our Life coming up in a, in a couple of weeks here, September 24th and 25th at Wells Fargo. Always better to be present, but there is that live stream option for people, so people can uh, get on the site for that, and it's going to be a spirit-charged weekend. I'm privileged to, to celebrate the closing Mass, but you better believe I'm going to be just taking it all in. You know, I'm... I'm I'm a disciple who needs to be fed here. So, and Chris is going to be one of those people. No pressure, no pressure on you. But uh, yeah, so I so, got to feed the bishop. Yeah, oh, <laughs> no, uh, yeah. This would be my uh, mini retreat. Right, but, yeah. <laughs> Taking so, notes. <laughs> oh, maybe maybe I'll come in in a stealth mode like you do, going to the Seven Eleven. But uh, uh, how yeah, right. uh, you know, without spoiler alert, just kind of whet our appetite. What will you be uh, talking about? You know, uh, I'm going to talk about how to be intentional about uh, living in the joy of the Lord, and. Sometimes people think that that you'll get joy if this happens in your life or when uh, that battle is is done. And one of my favorite scriptures is the joy of the Lord must be your strength. And it really blew my mind to realize the historical context for that line was when God's people were in exile, they were being called to go home and rebuild their fallen city, which in the ancient world was a, a call to war. Because if there were no walls around your city, your neighbors could just attack you and So when they heard, go home and rebuild, they heard, go home and maybe you're going to die. And in that context, when they started weeping, they heard the joy of the Lord must be your strength. So joy is not what you get when the battle is won. It's what you need to enter the battle. It's what you need to rebuild your, your church, your personal life, your world, your business, whatever you're facing. It's what you need 
if you're facing illness, if you're facing marital problems, you need joy here and now. And it, it's a grace from the Holy Spirit, but it's also something we make space for by by disciplining ourselves and living in, in certain ways when it comes to patterns of thought, when it comes to habits in our lives. So I'm going to it's all really a, a practical how-to. Oh, yeah. I mean, I guess I'm just thinking personally that, uh, you know, that the joy that's stirred when this is it, this is what you're being asked to be about, and it's going to ask everything and more that you have, but aha, this is what I get to, to, to do. And, you know, because sometimes, you know, when thin life's kind of, you know, in the ordinary zone, you know, that it just, uh, well, okay, that's when the, you know, the little petty anxieties or other things kind of come up, but then, no, it kind of locks us in in this beautiful way. So like you say, the, the pilgrimage, or as Hebrews, you know, for the sake of the joy that lay before him, Christ endured the cross, heedless of the shame. That, you know, going mm. to the joy, going to Calvary was going to joy for him, you know, even as he... You know what struck me in a new way, you just said this, for the sake of, for the sake of the joy. Uh, joy is always our motive as, as human beings. You know, and I, and I, and our Lord showed us that that's okay. And that, and that scripture shows us that that's a good thing. Uh, the father has put that desire in us for joy. And that's because of the purpose he created us for the, the last pages of the Bible. Heaven is a wedding banquet. I mean, if that doesn't shout joy to you, what does? I mean, that, that's it's a wedding banquet where you're all rejoicing in love. <clears throat> so heaven is that forever. So that's the motive of every, everything we've ever done. And Pascal said that it's the motive of every uh, choice of every human, of every action of every man, including those who hang themselves, that it's a misguided uh, desire for joy that guides people even to do very dysfunctional things for the sake of the joy that lay before him. And this is how we live a Christian life. It's, it's for the sake of the joy that lies before us, and knowing that God loves us enough to have created us for joy. And that's that's revolutionary for a lot of people, too, because we, we live with an idea sometimes of a God who, who barely likes us <laughs> or, uh, or is just waiting for us to mess up or that it's all about the rules. Some of the rules are about the joy, actually. Yeah. Well, it's all about the joy. And, you know, delight in the presence of the beloved. The wonder of the incarnation is that Jesus is with us every moment, every instant of our lives, whatever we're going through. And so the beloved is there, and he regards us in the same way. He finds joy in us and, and with us. So. Uh, Chris, you've really primed the pump here and, and awaken. I hope our listeners are, are drawn to Christ in our life, but thank you for giving time in your precious schedule. Oh, thank you. I was honored to talk to you, Bishop. Can't wait to see you. This has been another edition of Making It Personal with Bishop Johnson. You can hear Making It Personal with Bishop William Johnson every week on Iowa Catholic Radio and iowacatholicradio.com. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio and Making It Personal is provided by Sarah Vocations Ministry. Learn more at joinserra.org.